Welcome to Beyond the Game. I'm your host, Noah Swift. And today we're here to check out Villanova commit Eric Dixon. After his stellar CNC is averaging 27.9 points a game and 11.6 rebounds. Damn, call him you can't guard Rick for a reason. Welcome to Beyond the Game, where we go in depth with our guests on their process of growth as players to reach the pinnacle of their success. And today we got no other than Villanova commit Eric Dixon. Show him what you got, Dixon. Welcome to Beyond the Game. Appreciate you coming out. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. You know I do. No problem. But look back with me. Look time, the first time you stepped into the gym, the first time you attended the open gym, the first time you laced those shoes up play your first game, did you actually think when it was all said and done, you'd be the all-time leading scorer here, plus be on your way to one of the best programs in the country? What was your expectations in the beginning? Um, I was confident, but I, I would have never guessed this type of thing happened to me. I grew up here, watched a lot of good players come through, and to break the records they set is pretty special. And looking back on it, you know, just working hard, getting in the gym with Coach Grasty and my dad, you know, just the hard work really pays off. I want to read you this quote from the last time we sat down. It reads, I prepare at a high level, so I should be able to perform at a high level. Just how much work did you have to put in to get to this level? And, you know, how, what was the everyday grind like looking like for you, you know, to get to these necessarily accomplishments and steps that you, you know, accomplished and took? You know, I always worked hard, you know, on terms of on the court stuff, but mentally, I didn't take the game very seriously, like preparation in terms of stretching and watching film and, and being smart like that quote right there i heard that quote at usa camp you know you sink to the level of your preparation and when that when i heard that it really clicked in for my mental that i work hard so i should be able to perform you know there should be no nerves no nervousness on stuff on the court and at this level it's more mental than anything what kept you coming back to the gym you know because people do things for different reasons was it you simply wanted to be the best or you wanted that scholarship you know, what kept you coming back? What kept you hungry throughout those years? My family. You know, my family are them behind me, and they put so much money and time into me as a person. And, you know, just for me to have all the talent that I have God-given, for me not to work hard and utilize them would just be disrespectful. I remember you telling me before, a lot of people said that you were too slow. You wasn't athletic. You wouldn't be able to be an athlete. And that, that affected you mentally. Mm -hmm. And you... You overcame that. Talk, is, talk to us about overcoming that, that mental roadblock and just becoming mentally stronger. That was a part of it. It's all a part of it. Everybody's going to go through it. You know, the time where I was too slow and I just didn't have it, really. Uh, but they made a lot of sacrifices. You know, lonely Friday nights. I'm thinking to myself, I could probably be out somewhere at a party having fun, you know, chilling with some girls or something like that. But I knew I wanted to be, and I knew that going to those parties stuff wasn't going to help me reach my goals. When did you start seeing a change for yourself athletically? Like, when you was like, okay, I can do things I couldn't do before. So, when did you start seeing that hard work pay off? And when did you, how, how much did that help your game elevate, you know, you becoming more athletic over the years? 10th grade, 10th grade, when those lonely fire nights became more and more frequent, and my bounce became, you know, higher and higher. I started getting invited to more camps, started seeing my name online more, and then it was like, okay, this, this is real life, and I could make something out of this sport. I remember you telling me you, you study players like Zach Randolph because you guys have a similar style of play. What have you learned from watching him? Man? What, what have you tried to implement from continuing to watch film on guys like Zach Randolph that are similar to your style of play? It's just so much mental. You know, there's a lot of athletes in the NBA, and, you know, he's not one of the best of them. But just the way he uses his body and creates space and outthinks his opponents, something I try to emulate. I'm glad you say that because one thing you, you guys have in common is your ability to play under the basket and use your body to score. Talk, it, talk us through what matchups and what situations do you, do you look for to use your body and use your strength to put you in a position to score? I know that I'm playing a, a jumping guy, you know, that they like to jump, so I'm pump fake and I'm getting to their body a lot. Or even if I play another bruiser, another, you know, well-built kid, I know that mentally I'm going to be strong a lot of guys just because that's what I want to do. You know, if you want to bang down low for all four quarters, I'm willing to do it. And a lot of guys aren't willing to. And if you are, then kudos to you. It's going to be a good matchup. But if not, you know, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> hey, as I've seen you grow as a player, I've seen you spend your game more and more out to the perimeter. When did you say, I want to be more than just a post threat? And I want to be able to, you know, extend my game out 15, 20 feet, 30 feet to be more of a threat? You know, the game started taking me places, taking me to different states and 
getting me in different camps and seeing different players and different things. And I realized that, yeah, I'm good how I am. You know, I'm a good player, but I can be better. I can be better at a lot of things, including getting quicker, expanding my game, make myself more versatile, be able to play in more environments. Like I would go away and there would already be a seven foot post playing big man there. So now I got to, you know, adapt to what he does. And I, I couldn't do it that well. So I had to go back to the lab, get in the gym and find that skill set. But as I see you, one of my favorite one of my favorite moves that I see you do a lot is that turnaround jump shot. I love that thing. It's so crisp. It's such a pro move. I love it so much. But talk to me about how much time you put in to perfect that move, and when do you know it's the right time to use that move during the game? So I work out every day. I probably shoot about 20, 25 of those every day. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've been doing it for the past 13 years, 14 years now, you know it adds up. And you know, over the course of a game, like I said, I'm very physical. So I get into guys' chest a lot, and oftentimes I'll hit them once, hit them twice, and I'll just fade off, and I'll never see it coming. It's so important to know your spots as a player. And it seems like every time you utilize that move, it's in the same spot, 10 to 15 feet away from the basket on the left side. Talk to us about you know, where, where you like to use that move and like how important it is to know your spots, and how long did it take you to realize where your bread and butter was on the court? You gotta have move from all three levels. So if I'm at the three point line, I gotta move in the mid range just to turn around feet and down low at the hook shot. It's all about the matchups and where I get it at. And just like I said, being versatile and being able to score from everywhere. Okay, as, as I've seen you progress and grow over the years, I've seen you become, you add the, the, sh the three point shot into your shot selection more and more and more. How much time have you put in to be comfortable to shoot that shot? And what other areas of your game do you want to implement and become even more unique and versatile? Uh, really, it just came naturally. Like I didn't go into the gym and start shooting 100 threes or anything like that. Actually, I went to the gym and started shooting closer, getting my touch better, getting my fundamentals right, really understanding the game. You know, you watch any of the top shooters, they're not going to go into the gym and just start jacking up threes. They're not going to shoot 300, 400 threes. They're going to shoot a lot of close range jump shots, just get that touch right. And then when you can really shoot it, your form is the same from two feet as it is from 25. Right, that's, that's so true. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that. But I talk to you all day about what you're good at. And everybody knows you're a great scorer. But people don't know about the things like your passing ability, your, your ability to see the floor as a big man. Talk to me about your decision-making passing the ball and knowing when to be aggressive and knowing when not to be aggressive as a player. It's all about reading defenses. You know, uh, I'll start off a game, getting the feel for the defense, seeing where the double team's coming from. We'll help my teammates, then I'm calling it out, but seeing where it's coming from and just seeing where my guys are, you know, oftentimes. If I make it past the one spot, I know you're sitting on it. So I'm going to fake it to that spot and then hit another spot. Or I'm just going to read it. I'm going to fake the pass. I'm going to shoot it. You know, I just try to keep them off guard. Another thing I think people overlook is your defense ability. You know, the last time you played Shellham, you had 27 points, 13 rebounds. But you had four blocks and two blocks on the same possession. That's the winning plays that people, that coaches want. And that's, that's just what win games. Talk to us about your defensive mentality and making plays on the defensive end as well. Again, same thing as on offense. I'm not the most athletically gifted, so it just comes down to me thinking the game. You know, beating you to your spot, you know, getting my hands where you want to shoot it at, really. And in terms of just you know, those two block shots on possession, that's just me, you know, playing hard, giving them everything I got and being physical. I got to end on this because I feel like this is so pivotal. I say, you know, I've texted you this before. I really believe certain people have a certain, get blessed with a certain level of success because they can handle success. And you've been somebody that embodies that. You know, you had so much success throughout this community, and you continue to walk around, you know, with a humble approach and a gracefulness, and I admire that as well. Talk to us about your humble approach towards success. Uh, I'm not me without this community. I'm really not. I mean, I've grown up here. My family's grown up through here. And, you know, without this community, I really wouldn't be who I am today. Like, you know, this community, makes me realize how much of an impact I can have just by playing basketball and that in itself is a blessing. And my family just, you know, always helping me and pushing me and being the best I can. For me to just take all the credit and that like, you know, here I am, I'm that guy, it's really not fair. It's, it's really not, because it's not just me. It's a lot of things going on behind me. A lot of people pushing me as you guys just don't see, but I feel like I should pay it forward to them and give them that, uh, that shine when I can. What is the next step for Eric Dixon? Where do you see yourself going from here? Where do you see your next level of growth? Where do you see yourself five, ten years from now? Uh, I hope to just be a more disciplined young man. As of the time is, you know, I know that there's something I gotta work on. It's sort of time management, you know, seriousness about life in general. I just 
I hope that, you know, through college experiences, you know, with the help of the Villanova staff, that I just become a more disciplined person. For anybody that, you know, wants to follow your footsteps and wants to have a great career and just be an awesome person that you are, what advice do you have to them, you know, to, to work hard or whatever, you know, just from learning throughout your journey, what advice would you give the next generation? Just to stay disciplined, uh, stay loyal to those who are with you from the beginning, and understand that it's going to be tough times. It's going to be lonely. And, you know, when you get successful, it's going to be, you know, a little a couple guys calling you, a couple guys when you do this, a couple girls when you come see them then. And you got to realize that, you know, it's lonely at the top. It really is, truthfully. You know, it's lonely. You got to work hard. Like I said, lonely Friday nights, lonely Saturday nights. You want to check your phone, it's going to be party here, party there. Or oh, I could have been there with her, I could have been there with her. But that's not what it's about. You know, when you know what you want to be, you got to keep true to that. Appreciate you, baby. No problem. That's a wrap.